Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's a very special video, one that I've been waiting a long time to make, and I know you've been waiting a long time for me to make it. I'm gonna show you how I layer my cups with inks, with pastes, with vaults. We're gonna turn this cup into this cup. First things first, before you do anything, you wanna prep your cup. This is essential. You don't want a slick cup. Taking my sanding block, I think this is like 120 sanding grit right here, and I'm just going to buff, 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 buff. You're gonna get all that shine off. You want it to look dull. You wanna make sure that your cup is nice and toothy, so that way when you drop down your priming paint, it has something to hold onto. There's a little sticker at the bottom here. Go ahead and peel that guy up and buff out that shine. Take your cup on over to the sink, get it nice and clean with some Dawn dish soap, dry it up with a paper towel, and bring it back to your station. Now that we are finished sanding it all down, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a base coat. Now, a lot of you like to use spray paint. I like to use spray paint too, but during those winter times, it's really hard to spray your cup. It will drip, it will run, it won't stick to your cup, and you can't really spray paint inside. So this is a good alternative to those winter months um, and if you just want to do it inside. So let's talk about this priming paint. This is not an acrylic paint. Acrylic paint will just peel right off. This is a metal priming paint. It will bond to the metal surface of your tumbler. The longer you let it sit, the tighter the bond. Now that you have a nice clean cup, get a dish of water, put your natural sea sponge in there, let it soak up, and we're gonna wring it out. Mix up your paint, cause it will settle, and then you're gonna paint it onto the cup. Take your sponge and blot it. Just like if you were putting on foundation on your face, that's how you're gonna put on your priming paint. You don't drag it, you just blot it. It's gonna give you some texture. I like texture. You can use a brush, but I like texture. Take your heat gun or take your blow dryer and you're gonna blow dry your paint dry. Heat is gonna activate your paint to bond to your cup and it's gonna dry pretty quickly. And now you're gonna do a second coat the same exact way. You don't have to put your sponge back into the water. It's already moist. Just let this one chill out a little bit. When I come back tomorrow, I'm gonna be using the epoxy method to lay down my glitter. That's when the fun is going to start. We are back. I'm gonna use my total boat here. Put equal parts A, equal parts B. I mixed about five and five, so we've got a total of about 10. I'm gonna use my Naked by the NMO Vault line, one of my newest and favorite ones. We all know how to mix our epoxies. It's one and one together, mix for three minutes because we don't want any pockets of unmixed epoxy because that's when you get sticky. Sticky is not good. So mix it on up. You only need a little bit because this Naked is super fine. It doesn't need globs and thick layers of jellied epoxy. You just wanna get it nice and tacky. Let's throw some Naked down. And this is one of my favorites. It's super nudie and just very twinkly. I'm gonna lay it down right over my exposed metal priming paint. And it's gonna bring out some of my nude tone colors. Lots of champagnes are gonna pop through. And I'm just basically just letting it dust on there. Once you are done with your first layer of glitter, you've put such a thin layer of epoxy that you don't really have to put it on the turner. You can just let it hang out and come back to it next day. And we're gonna put on our first layer of top epoxy. And we're back. I'm gonna mix about 20 mLs. If I have anything left over, I'll just throw it in a mold. No big deal. I would rather have more epoxy than not enough. There's nothing worse than running out of epoxy in the middle of a job. Mixing it on up, scraping your sides, three minutes. I know it looks a little cloudy right now and you don't have to worry about that because you're gonna hit it with a blowtorch and all those bubbles are gonna pop and everyone's gonna be happy. I wanna make sure that my epoxy is somewhere between 72 and 76. That always tells me that it is doing its job and it is working its magic. And now we 
smoothly and evenly apply our epoxy. Don't try to fuss with it too much. It's gonna self level out. Just make sure that you're putting on and you're covering all the spots that need to be hit. You got your first layer of epoxy down. Take your torch and give it a nice pass. Don't stay in one spot too long because you will burn your epoxy and it will start to run. This is where you get that glass finish. Now with my extra epoxy, I'm gonna put some Naked down in here. I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna throw it in a mold because we don't waste epoxy. Once you are done with your first layer of epoxy, you will let this cure for 24 hours. I know, more curing. All right, we're back 24 hours later and we are going to put down our decal. I'm gonna want it to go at an angle because I wanted to take up as much surface area as possible. Let's peel this off. All right, now this is a clear cast. This is like a big sticker. So um, this is not a water slide. You don't have to get it all wet. You just peel and stick. And I'm going to start with one corner, right? And I'm going to slowly walk it because I don't want any air bubbles. One stroke at a time, just keep on creasing it out. Pull that paper out from underneath it, nice and slow. You don't want any air bubbles. It's a very durable clear cast, but it will stretch and you'll get ripples and bubbles, so you don't want any of that. You wanna make sure that you get it nice and easy. There you go, looking good, looking good. What are we gonna do? We're gonna put a top layer of epoxy on this and we are going to cover it. So, same old drill, part A, part B. Mix it nice and even for three minutes and drop down your epoxy. Just a nice thin layer because you just want to trap your clear cast down in that cup because we're going to drop our inks, our paste, and our vaults next. But first things first, gotta get a nice glass surface. We are going to let it cure for another 24 hours. Today's the day, guys. We're back, and we are dropping our layers of vault, our shade, and our enema paste. Clean up your cup, and let's get started. I always want to put down a layer that is light because I want the next colors to pop when laid up against it. I'm going to get my whipped, I'm going to get my sponge, and I'm going to get it nice and damp. And you're going to just take a little bit. You don't want to drench your sponge. You don't want too much. Let your sponge work for you. You see all those natural holes and textures? That's what we're going to use. We want a lace effect. I use my finger. I use the sponge, I use water, I use everything because there is no right or wrong reason. I cannot say that enough. We're done with the whipped. And let's pull out our pastes. I just randomly grabbed these colors. I don't know if I'm gonna use them all. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see how we go. I'm gonna grab my darkest color and I'm gonna give it that kind of nickel, rustic sort of look, very vintagey. And I want it to have as many layers as possible. So let's grab my sponge and let's see what we can make with this. I'm gonna grab some Summer Rush, drop some of that on there, and let's see if we can layer some of these colors on there. We're gonna blend, 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 blend. And I'm making sure that everything is dry because I don't wanna muddy it up. I don't use a new sponge. I don't clean my sponge. I just look for a spot that is not going to muddy up my colors. And I'm constantly flipping my cup, looking to see where I wanna put that next layer. So all of those textures and visual textures and layers that you see, it's because you're drying one layer on top of the other. You're not mixing the layers. You're just laying them on top of each other. And when you look at them very closely, you can see how they are all separated, but because they're dried. Now I'm taking my epoxy and I wanna put my vault down, but I'm very specific on where I want the vault glitter to drop. I'm not putting it on the entire cup because I don't want the vault to just run all over the cup. So I'm only going to drop it on certain parts. And now you see your layers starting to come to life. We're gonna let this cure before I come back and I start to drop some ink down. Put the rest of your epoxy to good use in the mold. 
We are back the next day. Everything is nice and cured. We have some raw glitter sitting on our cup. We're not going to put a layer of epoxy on top of this glitter. We're not going to cover this glitter up. We want to have a lots of texture because we want this glitter and this shade ink to fuse together to give you lots and lots and lots of texture. Now we're gonna drop our ink and I'm gonna take just a drop and use my finger to push it in between those flakes of glitter. We're gonna go all around the cup. So what you're seeing here is where I fell in love with the whole process of the alcohol ink. I loved the way you can manipulate and create just so many different forms and just change your art with just a single drop of alcohol. And I layer and I layer and I layer and there is no right, there's no wrong way. You just keep working it and one little drop of alcohol in that bottle can change your entire art. And that's what I'm doing here. Like just keep working. If you don't like the way your piece is looking, if you don't like a color, you just keep dropping and you use your alcohol you just keep using the tools that you have and you can change the entire look of your piece. And guys, when I say that there are no rules, I will drop the alcohol down first and then I'll put my ink down. Sometimes I'll put my ink down and then I'll put my alcohol down. Sometimes I'll use the hair dryer. Sometimes I'll blow on it. Sometimes I'll use my finger. There are no rules to how you play and how you manipulate this. I encourage you to just keep doing it. The more you do it, the more comfortable you're gonna get with it, and the more you're going to fall in love with the art that you create. And using all your materials, when I say that I use everything, I use everything from my vault, I use everything from my, my inks, to my fingers, to fire. I use everything that's in my studio to create something. Um, I don't restrict myself. If it works, great, but you won't know until you try it. You are back and you are ready to put that layer of epoxy down. Let's do it. Again, from the top, same thing. Mix your part A, mix your part B. Give it a nice mix and put it on down. Here we go. And you guessed it, leave it alone for 24 hours. Now, when you come back the next day, take it off the turner, give it a light sand. Then you're gonna wash it off, give it a nice white down, put it back on the turner. And for the last time, one final spin with epoxy a nice thin layer pop those bubbles same thing over repeat it all let it spin out don't touch it for 24 hours and you're done take all the pretty pictures look at it nice and pretty you're done boom finish is she pretty now you see more or less how I accomplish the look um, I always like to change it up so why don't you give your hand at it see how you can do it see how you like to play with it grab everything in your studio Play around, throw it all in a cup. There's no right, there's no wrong way. Um, get to layering, get to having some fun, and uh, I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.